Hey guys how are you today we are gonna see what if story like so what if Naruto was experiment with Kurenai movie. Particularly anyone with Naruto I've read so far are hella good, except, who the hell would hook Naruto and Orochimaru up. So this is my own crack at pairings with Naruto. White, I think it's a Naruto and Kurenai pairing, crack pairing student teacher, but hey don't pull that age crap on me, because I read some Kakashi Sakura thing there, and you guys were going on Yahoo. And age never matters in love, neither the gender, x3 everyone is free to love, except Rachimaru, okay Hess allowed some loving, Hess misunderstood, but don't pair him with Naruto, lol. I made it so that Naruto and Kurenai have a 7 years of age difference, due to that fact, I have no idea what Kurenai's age is, so I settled for 7 years difference even if, it's possibly like a decade or so, who knows. And yes, I'm quite aware the couple Asukura is real, hell yeah, she's pregnant with a ring and Asuma's dead, what do you want me to do? This is a fanfiction so if y'all are going to bash me by saying Asuma Kurenai forever well, that's just stupid, why hunt down fanfics that doesn't have your pair, x, x. Also, this is the first chapter, I'm not usually serious at stories I didn't plan or even put down as a story I'm actually going to try, I'll see how it turns out, and then from the reviews and response, and what you people think I'll continue, because again, I never did a Naruto pairing, oh, oh I read some, I'm usually a Shikatima writer haha. And no, I do not follow storylines in Naruto, I usually don't, it's too serious. Hiba noticed his sensei withdrawn when it happened, to what happened. When Naruto Uzumaki had left Konoha, no one seemed to notice it, but him, maybe because he had always had a slight crush towards his sensei, but it completely disappeared when he reasoned going for an older woman, would only lead to heartbreak. He was sure of it because he had watched his sister break many young men hearts, by saying her work is important at the moment, ninjas more importantly are not the type of people to get married, so it was a shocker after the withdrawal from Kurenai, and then Asuma coming by more often, Asuma had a thing for his sensei, did he approve? No, absolutely not. He had questioned Kurenai why she had withdrawn, but then he would have received some weird looks from her and be like what are you talking about. No one truly knows how Kurenai sensei was because they don't try to get to know her, sometimes he felt that some ninjas are sexist the males didn't feel a woman should be a ninja, at times he gets that feeling when Kurenai talks to some jounins and they have this sort of expression on. What's wrong, Kiba? Kurenai asked. Kiba shook his head and then whistled to get a camera's attention who was busy wagging his tails as he was being petted by Hinata. Aye, he started but then shook his head again, but then he was almost like Naruto, he sometimes say some stupid sum and make stupid mistake and was as just driven as Naruto, I always thought Naruto had a crush on you. Gurunai didn't react at all, nah Kiba, and here I thought you were to speak of something important or troubling. Kiba frowned and went on top of Akamaru, but that is important and troubling. Nah perv, why is it we didn't come back to Konoha earlier than supposedly? Naruto asked as they approached the gate of Konoha, his teacher the legendary Toad Sanin, was taking notes, busily writing something. You weren't ready for the real deal, Naruto, you were still a brat, when Naruto was about to say he wasn't a brat, Jiraiya covered his mouth. Be quiet, boy, do you see what I see? Jiraiya had the same usual glint Naruto was accustomed to, and he followed his perverted teacher's eyes, and he too, was sort of awestruck. Right in front of them was one of a hella good looking woman, Naruto had seen her before, when he was younger, he couldn't quite put it together, until her red eyes met his own blues. Kurenai, he whispered. How odd, his heart seemed to beat faster, but he settled it down, because there was no logic to why his heart should race at the sight of teammate long time teacher, Kurenai Yuhi. And she was about to wave to him until a giant dog and a wild looking guy came rushing by, and Jiraiya pushed Naruto to save himself. What the? Naruto skillfully and gracefully maneuvered doing some sort of flip and landing perfectly, hey, Kiba, Akamaru, whoa, you are huge. Kiba frowned and said, thanks Naruto. He grinned flashing his sharp canine tooth. Not you, Baka, Akamaru. Hess very big. Naruto made a move with his arms to emphasize how big Akamaru got. I never really noticed, Kiba said. Naruto chuckled a bit, no kidding, instead of him on you it became the other way around. Kiba still looked confused so Naruto let it go and continued to tell Kiba about the stuff he went through until he remembered about Kurenai Yuuhi. Shoot, he looked around, but she was completely gone, Naruto pulled Kiba off Akamaru and then whispered to Kiba's ear, is Kurenai sensei still with Asuma? What are you talking about? Kiba said and then remembered his old teacher, Kiba pushed Naruto in an mean way, what did you do to my sensei? Nani? I didn't do anything to her, the confused Naruto replied while Jiraiya came by and watched and listened quietly between the two. When you left she was completely, well she was more quiet than usual, Kiba said and then shrugged. Uh-huh, and you think, I had something to do with it? Yeah. Think. 
Kiba hit Naruto's head as if to show he needs to think, a movement that's not very successful, because it would only create brain damages which everyone seemed to suffer here. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Gurunai was slightly taken aback when she caught a pair of blue eyes, she was shocked and then surprised and then replaced with great joy, Naruto Uzumaki was back, the first thing that popped into her head was the energy of Konoha would be here again, but then the sudden realization hit her, the council's already told Tsunade Sama what was in the scroll, she felt slightly sick. To put someone in such a position without their say, and when she had the courage to tell Naruto herself, her old time student Kiba in Yuzuka came rushing in with Akimaru. It wasn't the right time, maybe there was still a chance. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto blushed slightly and even Kiba noticed and kept poking Naruto to tell him to say what it was, even Jiraiya said to say it too. The 12-year-old Naruto was practicing very hard, using his clones and other moves he learned, he battled himself, they always said your greatest enemy is yourself because you know everything. He only stopped practicing when he caught sight of her teammate sensei, Kurina Yuuhi, she was actually the first woman Naruto had seen to be Jounin, had always seen only male adult ninjas so far, so when he caught sight of her he was instantly in a state of admiration, he heard from Kakashi and Asuma that she turned Jounin recently, she looked young and awesome. He approached her and she turned instantly. Hey, Naruto. Gurunai sensei he grinned and kind of scratched his head, he felt suddenly shy, um, Naruto was awed by her crimson eyes, she really fitted her name with those eyes of hers, they were sort of eerie, they were similar to the Ichiha's eyes, um, he couldn't believe he was at lost for words, how old are you? He blurted out. Gurunai raised an eyebrow wondering why Naruto would suddenly ask that question, it was sort of rude, but she knew he doesn't mean it as an offensive thing, 19. Naruto gasped, so young. Kakashi and Asuma are a sign compared to you. Gurunai blushed at this because it was obvious Naruto was in awe with his mouth and eyes opening wide. Naruto crossed his arms and said, well Kurunai was hot. Was? Kiba and Jiraiya said at the same time. Yeah, I've seen hotter ones, and he was being honest. Kiba in turn looked at Jiraiya who chuckled looking very happy at the influence he had on Naruto, Tsunade Sama will kill you, and that totally killed his smile. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X The word around town was Naruto came back and definitely went through puberty and knew how to charm the ladies as Sakura and Ino watched him talking to some female civilians, he had them giggling and then he had his arms wrapped around two girls and they were heading out to go to a restaurant until Sakura thought it she should stop, she pulled Naruto's ear and said long time no see, Naruto. Sakura said sort of like chiding him for his actions. Naruto, you changed, Ino said taking a look at Naruto from top to bottom, good looking now, I see, Naruto shrugged, Ino and Sakura at least knew Naruto was not cocky, though he did indulge in male activity of trying to hook up. Thanks, Ino, you look radiant, Naruto said, actually he kind of caressed Ino's cheek and then quickly withdrew it, Ino was blushing furiously. Ureya and Kiba were there gawking, particularly they've been following Naruto, Kiba was curious to how much Naruto changed, and he concluded he was still the same except more confident with the ladies, not perverted so much like a certain white ninja he was standing by, shall definitely kill you. And then they saw Naruto getting punched by Sakura, and he was sent flying and crashing to the ground. Whoa, Jiraiya said, he gulped, Sakura Haruno was just like Tsunade and that's just plain scary, if she was anything like Tsunade, Jiraiya knew never to flaunt his books around them. All I said was you look the same, Sakura-chan. Naruto said, completely puzzled to why Sakura was angered by this when he thought she should be thrilled. And sometimes Naruto was clueless still. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Bakashi and Jiraiya met on top of the Hokage's rooftop, how clever, Tsunade would never suspect them to be right under her nose. So I'm working on a new book, and the theme is. Bakashi was waiting. Teacher and student. Nani. No good. No, who are you going to use as an example? There is no students here that would go for their teachers. Really? I always thought Sakura had a crush on you, or maybe it was the other way around. Bakashi would have threw the book he held in his hand as the legendary Toad Man, but the book was important and he didn't finish it yet. Well, since you don't like that, I think Kurenai, she's hot. She is, are going to use alias name. 
Yup, I'm gonna name the character Kuryu. I'm still looking for the male, what kind of man would Kuryu be into? X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X And there were loud crashing and yells of pain inside the Hukage's office that made some ninjas paused as they passed it. Banko was one of those people outside listening in, or she didn't need listening in, anyone could hear why the Godim was upset, it had something to do with the blonde fox kid or a young man that came back. Thanks for bringing me some sweet dumplings, Kurinai, Anko said to her friend who remained quiet and was collected during the entire time they were there. Hey, yeah no problem. Dureya. You effing perverted toad man. You made Naruto into a pervert. Tsunade yelled. Nia. But Abichin, I'm not a pervert, I just appreciate the female body more than others, Naruto defended his perverted toad man Senen. Anko laughed out loud and said to Kurinai, I wish I'm in there to see for myself what's really going on, Tsunade-sama is very protective of Naruto, so she probably won't want him going around being with random women. You know so? Kurinai asked suddenly quite curious to why Hokage-sama would be protective of the blonde ninja. Yeah, there was this one time, I was trying to seduce Naruto, and Tsunade-sama got all on me, not the best days, her yells are as strong as her punches man, even when I tried to creep her out with snakes. The door opened and Naruto came out laughing and saying, yada, whatever, it'll settle down when I'm old. And Jure is still in the room shouting, that's my student. Die. Tsunade yelled. Ah, Anko-chan, Kurinai-sensei, Naruto smiled at them. Naruto. You twerp, hitting on girls when you just got here, TSK, you are gonna give Tsunade-sama a heart attack, Anko finished and then added, why do you call Kurinai-sensei? I don't think I would, Tsunade is pretty strong, she has enough energy to try and kill Jiraiya, huh, cautious a sensei. Not your sensei, Anko implied something else and Naruto caught on. But she's my type of sensei, Naruto winked to Kurinai he said it lightly, but sure, whatever Anko-chan, it'll just call Kurinai-sensei, Kurinai-san. Kurinai was blushing and Anko noticed, but didn't say anything. Kurinai shook her head at the two, she never realized, but Anko and Naruto were sort of similar in personality, like how Anko would do some childish stuff, the same things Naruto practically pulled back then, it was no wonder why they had hit it off instantly. Shizun opened the door and told Kurinai to go in since Tsunade-sama was waiting for her, and then Naruto and Anko shared a look. Say Anko, are you and Kurinai-san going out? What? Why would you even think that, Naruto, you frickin' blonde pervert twerp? Well, cause you and her are so close. She never went out with Asuma sensei so I figured she must go the other way. Anko hit him and then pulled at him, say Naruto since you're an adult let's go drink some sake. And dumplings. I love my sweets. You and Kakashi would never hit it off, he dosed like sweets. Yup. People who don't like dumplings are not my kind of people. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X There was an Anbu in the room and was standing next to Kurinai, while Tsune told all the stuff she needed to do. The Anbu over here would help you in the process if any case, though why you would need any help in doing so. They are dead serious about this. The Anbu had the gut to question the Hokage, and Kurinai knew Tsunade doesn't take crap from anyone except Shes a great softy for Naruto. Yes, I think it's for the best, Tsunade said, now, shut up. So it was a surprise when she didn't so much yelled at the Anbu. May I have permission to speak? The Anbu asked, Kurinai felt whoever he was, he seemed to smile underneath. Kurinai stifled a laughter because the Anbu must have clearly known that he already talked before and hadn't bothered asking for permission, so why now? To further poke Tsunade in her temper. Hi, hi, what is it? I saw Anko and Naruto leave, and I think they're heading for some drinks, I wish to join them if it would not offend, the Anbu said, and to even make a point he added, just in case something happens, you know Anko. You know Anko? Kurinai blurted and blushed at her sudden outburst. The Anbu was silent. So, now you become silent, Tsunade picked up her pen and threw it at the Anbu, go, go, leave. Shizun was clearly giggling, Shin-kun, Yara and Anbu, you should act like this. Oh, K, okay, flashing a thumbs up, similar habit that Naruto does which Kurinai noticed. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Anko and Naruto had their six bottles of sake and were still going at it by the time Shin came by, he easily slipped in their booth as they called the waiter for some more, the waiter looked at Shin, and Shin shook his head. 
you should have stopped them the moment they came here, he told the waiter, Anko was angered by the sake disappearing and tried to punch Shin, but there was no power into her punches, Ke, Anko you behave like a man. Shut up, you prickin' pandaya, she even burped, and it smelled like sake, Narushio here, is gonna get laid and be mine, you know, the big turnin'. Hey, Anko you're a bad influence, Shin asked a waiter for some glasses of water, Naruto, don't listen to Anko, she handles snakes, snakes are, I don't know, something else. Anko hissed and reached for Shin while licking her lips, suggestive. I, sometimes sinful and beautiful even when drunk and acting like usual. I knew oh, Shinbu, Shinanbu, besides, am not that kind of guy, I like women, I do, but I ish not gonna go around and do that. Good, so, Shin sighed, thanks a lot Anko, you make my job harder every time, Anko was fast asleep and had her arms wrapped around Shin, and he didn't even know, geez, she moves like a snake. His family doesn't take a liking towards snakes for various of reasons, and Anko did have a past with Orochimaru, at least Anko hadn't left the village and remained. He made Naruto and Anko drink water so they'll feel much better, damn you too, now I have to take you both home, and I'm not an effin' babysitter, Shin mumbled and was cursing the Hokage too since he was on a roll. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto woke up and found himself lucky not to have some sort of side effect from drinking too much, there was no puking, and he easily gotten off the futon, ne. This was not his house, speaking of his house apartment, he hadn't been there in ages, no, shit, actually this was it except way neater, and there were weapons hanging around and he was laying on the couch, and he smelled food and ramen. He caught sight of his old friend, who wasn't wearing his Anbu mask today, so his thoughts of Anbu sleeping with mask on was not true. Shin, hey, thanks for taking care of me, Naruto said. Yeah, Tsunade would kill me anyways, Naruto sat down and ate the ramen that was prepared for him, he thanked Shin, even though his mouth was full and it was incredibly good, Shin used good seasoning and some spicy stuff. You made dumplings. Hi, Anko like sweet, it would help because she'll probably feel horrid today, Shin said, shrugging, he grabbed a stick for himself and ate some, I wasn't allowed to eat sweets before. Nah, why? Oh, simple, I was a hyper child, sweet plus me, means a never ending chase, and struggles to keep me hold, it'll probably be bouncing off the walls or something like that. Oh. Damn it, my head. Anko shouted from inside the room. So she gets the room and I get the couch, Naruto said with raised eyebrows which Shin totally ignored, Shin moved around and grabbed his mask hanging on the wall and wore it before going in the room. Let me down, you ass muncher. Anko said as she was being carried by Shin, and Shin did listen and drop her down into a chair smoothly, and it looked gentle enough without saying Shin was very careful. Duo, dumplings. And she munches off, she was a total dumpling muncher. So, I thought you were after Kurunayuhi, Shin said at Naruto, who choked on his ramen and started coughing, Shin handed him water and slapped Naruto hard on the back. Who told you that? The white-haired man, Shin said, Tsunade told me to watch over you, I won't allow women in the house and no house parties, you must be home before eleven understood. Ah, okay, mom, Naruto said who grinned at Shin, who realized he did sound like a mom when he spoke, that. Shin, you did sound just like an old fart mom just now, Anko said while eating more dumplings. Why do moms have to be old fart? Because then they would be a milf, Naruto and Anko said at the same time. You two are idiots, and then Shin thought about how people viewed his mother, Anko and Naruto do have a point. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Shin had left Naruto and Anko earlier because he was called in for a mission, when Shin left, Naruto noticed Anko wasn't as random when he was around, in fact she was more quiet than usual. Do you have any job to do? Naruto asked Anko, who shook her head, okay, how about hanging out with your best friend, Kurunai-san? You hang out with Shin since you left Konoha, right Naruto? Hi, along the way I met him, he paid some of our expenses since Jiraiya spends his money with other stuff. Have you ever seen his face? Yup, I just saw it a while ago while you were sleeping, why? Oh, nothing, anyways, why are you trying to get rid of me? I'm not, I just thought you wanted to see your best friend. And I thought you wanted to see Kurunai-san, I joked many times with her that she should hook up with you instead of the older men around here. Really? Why? Oh, I just thought it would be amusing because her old student Hanada Hayuga was incredibly in love with you, so if she hooks up with you that's betraying her student. And that would be amusing, betrayal. Hey, it's life, there is always some snakes around, not saying all the snakes out there are evil and poisonous. 
Naruto nodded in thanks to Anko, being amused about the prospect of Kurinai being with him, he couldn't help but think it too, also note that Anko had some twisted humor. You hate red? Shin asked him. Naruto had told Shin earlier he hated the color red when Shin pulled out a red bandana and tied it to his right arm. Yeah, they remind me of some troubling things. He shivered remembering the eyes of the Kaiubi inside him, and then Sasuke's and Itachi's eyes haunting him, and then the occasion of seeing blood spattered around, like Haku who was used as a tool and seen as a tool. Had seen too much red in his life, red was associated with anger too. No kidding, any good memories with red. He did, he remembered seeing Kurinai sensei during the Chunin exam, Kakashi had said that he was proud that he had defeated Kurinai student Kiba, saying he knew he could do it all along and proved Kurinai wrong, so Kurinai sensei had not thought he could do it, and at first he was slightly broken hearted at this, but then admired Kurinai more because she was faithful to her team. But even so she also had told Hinata to give him ointment after the fight to help Hinata with her feelings, she said to take the ointment, Naruto looked into her crimson eyes, and they were so captivating he couldn't do anything but nod and take it, her eyes were beautiful, they had always soothed him when he had chances to meet them. Yes, this one sensei a Kanoha, has crimson eyes, they're crimson and beautiful. See, red is not all that bad, Yaura the sun burst energy, Naruto, you like the sun, so never forget to shine because people love your light. Naruto nodded and even hugged Shin, who was taken aback, but didn't pull away, nor did he hug back, you need to be more flexible, Shin, Naruto said, don't be rigid, nah. You gotta move your humps. What? And they spent the rest of the day trying to dance, which didn't turn out so bad, they were pretty good in break dancing and footstep, it went so far that they were doing many footsteps and hand movements, and doing the moonwalk, they tried to be smooth with their bodies, but they weren't that good yet. Why are you learning to dance? Shin asked. I heard from Iro Senen, the best dancers are the greatest in bed. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X End of my first chapter. My plan was to introduce everyone that was introduced again the first time Naruto came, but then I got bored and thought to just bring the fun characters, XD and yes, I think Anko is fun, haha. Not very well written, but it's my first hit thing with this pair, oh, oh experimental fanfiction you might say. Oh, yeah I made the time skip longer because if someone who have age difference were about to hook up, I don't care about the difference, I just want them to be adult to make it appropriate to others who possibly complains. So I hope it was enjoyable. Anko would always be here if Kurinai is here, xd I always thought you can't have just one of them, x3. Man. Anko sighed as she crossed her legs, she looked at Naruto who seemed to be deep in thought, she might as well join him, and then she changed her mind because she was too busy looking around the place, there were weapons hanging on the walls and Anbu mask, and a painting of a gorgeous waterfall and two people standing there, they seemed to be close. Shin painted that, Naruto spoke up, Anko nodded, yeah, he painted it because we were sort of foolish back then, we fancied ourselves some sort of Romeo, but then we hanged out with Yureya too many times, and our innocence it's not Suo, there, Naruto even blushed at this. So you're saying you fantasize about Kurinai? What do you think when you think of her? Anko said, her lips tugging upward into a delicious teasing smile, which Naruto received by chuckling nervously. Aye, Naruto was blushed a deeper shade of red and coughed a little bit to try and regain his composure, well, I never liked red, till Shin said he likes red, creatively changing the subject but not appearing so. He likes red? Anko asked, her eyes widened, does he also have a thing for Kurinai? Naruto shrugged at this. Man likes women in general especially beautiful ones, was Naruto's answer, but he continued on, I still told him I hate red, so he started describing a woman in red, and when he did, my mind went straight to Kurinai. Ha. With Shin you may never know if he likes women in general, Anko laughed at her own comment. Say Anko-chan, how do you and Shin know each other? Naruto asked. Oh, because he was talking back to Tsunade-sama one day, and I tried to beat him up for it. Nah. Was this before I left or when I was gone? Anko eyes became serious like she was about to kill someone, and Naruto was reminded of how he had always called her the scary snake lady, he gulped, gone, and he was sent on missions till he fully disappeared, and now just came back the same time you guys did, since he was somewhat with you and Jureya-sama. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Shin popped into the Hokage's office and then let out a manly surprised yelp when he noticed Kurinai was right beside her, which made everyone inside the room, Kurinai, Tsunade and Shizun look at him weird. 
he bowed to Tsunade when he regained his composure and remained silent, he was about to ask why everyone was quiet, but it seemed everyone was quiet because they were serious or on the edge. I understand you haven't told Naruto yet, but you have too soon, I cannot be the one telling him the news about it, since it's already hard enough to put him in that situation, Tsunade said to Kurunai. I did not choose this, Kurunai said, and added, Tsunade Sama, but how am I supposed to tell it to him, and he would take it as is and not run away from it. Shin walked silently around the office and nudged Shizun who was beside Tsunade's desk, did I miss something? He whispered quietly. It's about two clans' bloodline, Shizun whispered back, and Shin got everything from that simple statement. I don't think it would be a problem for you, Kurunai-san, just tell Naruto, I'm sure he doesn't mind marrying you, since he had this huge crush on you back then, Shin spoke out of turn again, and Tsunade shook her head and sighed as if tired of Shin's habit. Heh, Kurunai blushed, it, it's not about, he and I, Kurunai started to say. No. Shin turned to Tsunade for confirmation. No, Shin, even though you are not as loud as Naruto, you freaking act like him with not knowing when to shut your mouth, but Tsunade didn't say it out of anger, merely stating facts, you and Anbu, please act like it. And that one comment hit Shin hard but, he still didn't kept his mouth shut, so what's this about Naruto then? Why does Kurunai-san have to tell it to him when she has nothing to do with it, whatsoever? Shin. Shizun sat and held Shin's arm as if to relax him because everyone had sensed the aura Shin was throwing off, and it didn't feel good, it's fine, Naruto would be okay. It has something to do with Kai Ubi. Kurunai-san, I always wanted to know, but why are your eyes red? X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto cold and keeps still even after many hours of Anko being gone because she had work to do, Shin always have something up, he sat on the kitchen chair for a long time he lost track of time, and by time the sun was about to set, he realized he was drenched in sweats, his white shirt sticking to him like his second skin, he was being molded into them. He quickly took them off and opened the window to look outside, the sun was slowly going down, and the more it seems to disappear the more, he felt hot, and then his heart clenched, she was far away, but he could pinpoint her, her scent was flowing into his nose, and he welcomed it as he inhaled greatly, he purred slightly and he shook, she was coming closer, and closer. Hey, someone called behind him, Naruto turned to see Shin taking off his mask, at first he wanted to rip Shin apart for some reason for interrupting whatever he was doing. He was looking at Naruto differently, Naruto could smell the awkwardness in the air, you look, different. Speak for yourself, Naruto for the first time spoke after many hours, and he heard his voice as if it was from the distant, in fact his voice was different. I'm dead serious, your eyes are rent, they're not the normal shades of blue you have, red is rimming around it. What? Shin didn't reply any further, he walked past Naruto and closed the window Naruto had opened earlier, tell me, how do you feel? And Naruto's eyes were starting to look the same, it must be the scent. Alright, weird, but, you know being restless and then zoning out and sweating hard, then somehow smelling this delicious fragrance on a female, I don't think. You were smelling delicious fragrance on a female. Shin was looking at him with incredulous eyes. It was delicious, Naruto licked his lips because they felt dry, and then he repeated it again, I think, I think something is wrong. What was Anko said last night? Oh yeah, you need to get laid, Shin said lightly as a joke, so Naruto would relax because he was very tense. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto and Shin decided to eat at Ichiraku Raymond when things seemed to be okay, and they were pretty hungry enough because they kept ordering, Naruto didn't know, but he was hungrier than usual, it's like he was trying to get full, but food it's not exactly what he wanted, he looked at Shin who was eating the same amount as he was, so again, he didn't find it odd at all. The only weird thing was Shin no longer wore his mask to go outside, and it was sort of a new thing for Naruto to actually hang out with Shin and see his face, so he didn't have to wonder who Shin would be looking at, though he did see AM taking some glances on Shin, so Naruto did what best friends do, he nudged Shin and pointed with his eyes at AM, who blushed. Shin choked on his ramen, and Naruto called help but laugh, gah, h help, someone slapped his back, and Shin released a relief breath, thank you, he spoke softly. Best Shin. Naruto and Shin both turned around with bowl on one hand and the chopstick on the other, yo, Naruto said, he grinned widely enough at Kurunai and squinted at Anko, who returned the expression. Good evening, Kurunai-san, Anko, Shin said, bowing his head slightly as shown polite greetings. Kurunai blinked a couple of times and looked between Naruto and who she thought was Shin. Kurunai-san. 
Do you want some ramen? It's delicious, yada, let's eat na. Gurunai nodded and joined in, she wondered if Shin had spoken to Naruto about what Tsunade had said, Shin was furious with Tsunade and Kurunai had spoken how immature he was acting, and as a ninja, he should keep his emotion at bay, and not let his personal relationship with Naruto affect his job, Shin was quiet after she was done, and she could see why Tsunade was sort of not as strict with him, to her eyes, Shin was almost the same age as Naruto, or they are the same age, but to be already high rank in such a young age was completely unheard of, unless you are Itachi Uchiha. Gurunai looked back at her friend, Anko who stood still. I think, I'll go get me some dumpling, she told Kurunai and smiled. Shin without saying much left and followed Anko. Nah, what's that all about? Naruto voiced his thoughts out loud and then looked at the bowls he and Shin have, gah. That bastard. He left me here to pay. My poor wallet. Gurunai couldn't help but laugh, but since she was older, decided to help Naruto out and was pulling out her wallet when Naruto held her arm to stop her, it's fine, Kurunai-san, eat and ill play since I was the one that offered. He grinned and ordered for Kurunai, he didn't wait for her to say no, you changed quite a bit, Naruto. He was no longer a boy, and it was apparent to the, the females that Naruto was a man to be desired, she knew this as a fact, because she had seen their lust-filled eyes and hushed whispered. Nah, really. I'm more mature now, right? Naruto waggled his eyebrows. Nope, just appearance-wise, Kurunai told him, though it was kind of a lie since she was sure Naruto had matured. Naruto seemed to ponder about it and added before eating his ramen, I think you become more beautiful throughout time, though it was a whisper, Kurunai heard it. For that simple whisper Kurunai was sent back to the dream she had about him. Kurunai was sitting down on the swing underneath a tree, she was crying, and the tears won't stop, why won't they stop? He left, she struggled to say between her sobs, he left, she repeated and made a move as to stop her tears, but her movement seemed to have made it worse, she felt broken inside. Kurunai-sensei. Are you alright? It was Naruto's voice and Kurunai looked up and saw Naruto with his blue eyes and blonde hair that seems to shine more, thanks to the sun that was right behind him, it sort of made him look like an angel just sent to check on her. Naruto, she said uneasily, wah. Naruto touched her cheeks and kissed her on the cheeks multiple times, in kissing away your tears, it was such a gentle tone, he spoke with, he was being careful with her, it'll come back for you. Gurunai frowned, it sure wasn't the time to remember her dream, she told Anko about it when she first had it, and Anko had teased her and even asked her if she was into that sort of thing teacher student thing. Gurunai had threatened Anko never to buy her dumplings even if she begged her, that was enough to shut her best friend up, though Anko later on said with a serious face that for her to dream about Naruto in such a way meant something, Kurunai questioned Anko further, and Anko's reply was a question, are you afraid of falling? X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Anko won't speak to Shin, which irritated him and resorted to the nicknames he had heard Naruto call him Snake Lady, she didn't receive the name kindly, though it proven to why she was given such a nickname, as she hissed at him like a snake would with such venom, he thought he might be hearing rattle soon, so she went into the dumpling store in Shin. Not wanting to cause a scene and attract any more attention which they quite did with the childish behavior they were displaying. He waited for what seems to be hours, and then Anko came out and handed him paper. Why he didn't finish as his eyes sort of widen at the amount he assumed he had to pay, because it had his name written in, he frowned and glared at the snake lady, who whistled like a snake pretending to be a charmer. He went in and paid, he would have to get working on, because that killed his wallet, he gulped, he wondered if he could live eating one meal a day, for the next month, his stomach growled in protest to the thought. What's bothering you? He asked Anko as they started walking silently. Nothing. Whatever, if you want to act childish by all means I won't stop you, but to be mad at me and have no reason to why is by far aggravating. Aha, uh -huh, Anko merely said, so they continued to walk in silence, and for some odd reason they weren't quite following the street path, they took a detour to Kanoha's forest. Anko climbed a tree and then kept jumping from tree to tree, and Shin thought the gentleman thing to do was to follow, like a dog. You know, he started as he jumped from another tree, if you were my type of woman in this, he jumped again, would be, a date, I gotta say we make a pretty weird couple, he flashed a grin when Anko looked back and out of nowhere, about a hundred dumpling sticks were being flown at him, which he dodged, but he got hit on on each of his arm and one on each of his leg. He jumped up as he saw one coming at his legend, gah. He landed on the tree bench and glared at Anko who was chuckling. And then you could say, our courting consists of blood, and she licked the kunai she had in her hand, and Shin, who never liked snake and thought their tongue was actually the one bothered him the most, cold help but stare at Anko's tongue licking the sharp kunai, your blood. You scare me, Shin blurted out, she honestly does. 
Oh, thanks, stop it, with your compliment baby I'm all yours, and he laughed, but he stopped when he noticed Anko watching him too seriously like a cobra about to attack, it's my first time seeing you. Sealed identity, Shin nodded, and so, because it's your first time you figured you could scratch it. He joked, though Anko nodded at this, he pulled at the sticks that had made their mark on him. Best date ever, he'll remember it always, Shin said and looked out and saw that she had led him to the deepest part of Konoha, but they were also in one of the highest part of Konoha that they could see the village. I can't tell as much right now, but your hair is similar to Kakashi and Jureya though it's a very light blonde, Shin helped her out, I always wanted black hair, but I couldn't quite get it, since none of my parents have black hair. You three are similar though. Except him devilishly handsome, or maybe second to Kakashi, who knows, I hear has a ladies man. You got the first one right about you. Being handsome. Why thank you, and you're very beautiful especially when you laugh. Experiment. Flirting with the snake. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto had insisted a lot that Kurinai shouldn't walk home alone late at night, even if she was a ninja and a jonin at that, Kurinai frowned at this, and reason she could walk herself home, she'd done it plenty of times. But still Naruto was stubborn and grabbed Kurinai's hand and started leading her home, and Kurinai protested until she was quite aware the blonde ninja couldn't hear her protest, so she just found herself staring at their linked hand, it was not joined in an intimate way though they were joined, he turned around and stopped, and Kurinai kept going, so she walked straight into his chest. To prevent neither of them falling, even though ninjas are very good at regaining balance either way, Naruto steadied Kurinai by holding her waists, they blinked a couple of times and then locked eyes, and they realized how close they were, but didn't say any word of protest. Ahm, um, Naruto was blushing, and then the same delicious scent was going into his nose, almost intoxicating him, sorry about that, he said, but made no move to remove his hands from where they were. No, it's okay, my fault, she chuckled nervously and mentally yelled at herself, you are not a teenager any longer. Damn, the sexy blue eyes of his. Think of him as a kid. Yeah. I was going to ask you where your house is, since, he smiled a little, crinkled his nose, I, um, don't know where it is, it's stupid to let when I don't know. True, and here I was wondering how could Naruto know, Kurinai blinked a couple of times and decided to tease him a bit, maybe, you've been following me, Naruto's eyes widened, and they both laughed. But um, Kurinai was the one stepped back, Naruto's hand sliding off her waist, my apartment is right there, she pointed at the building they were just right in front, so thank you. Our welcome, he said without taking his eyes off of hers, he took a step forward and held her cheeks, every time I see a cherry blossom there remind me of you, he whispered. Kurinai gazed into his eyes, and then her eyes lingered to his lips, her heart was starting to beat faster, even though she was telling herself she was calm. I can't do this, Hess. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Banco walked into Kurinay's apartment without even knocking. Make yourself comfortable, Kurinay called. Already am, Anko replied back as she walked to the living room to find Kurinai sitting down on her free time reading a book, I don't know woes pathetic, you reading some health book or Kakashi and Jureya planning to write a book. Anko noticed how simple Kurinai was at home, wearing a simple home dress, none of the sultry red color bandage outfit she always wore for reason to attract enemies, she wore makeup to draw in the enemy's eyes into hers, but she didn't have any right now, it was practically vacation time for both of them, and wasn't that the problem, they both have no jobs to do, and are at home most of the time. And now they're noticing in their lives how lonely a ninja could be, that's why for the couple of days they've been hanging out, or somehow bumped into Naruto and Shin like yesterday night. Kurinai sighed and closed her book and put it to the side, what's up, Anko? Kurinai looked at her friend's face, who was calm and collected and as usual, has the air of will strike at any given time, Anko was in short unpredictable, even if you try to think of what she's going to do next. So word around town is you and Naruto are hooking up, Anko had the audacity to wiggle her eyebrows as if it was good news. Kurinai opened her mouth to say something, and then thought about it and closed her mouth and once again opened it, that's not true, Anko was about to disagree and tell her what she thought, but Kurinai won't have any of it, she sent a ice glare at Anko, I don't think I would ever hook up with Naruto, Hess younger than I for the most part, and that's betraying Hinata. I can't do that to my former student, Kurinai shook her head. And that translate to, I'm afraid hell leave me for younger ones if we do hook up like my student Hinata, who blossomed into a beautiful woman and well-blessed front, Anko grinned. That's not true. And I'm also well blessed up in the front. 
Aunt make me ask Shin to cook spicy food and force you to eat them. Shin knows how to cook spicy food. Anko blinked in surprise, Kurinai saw something change in her friend eyes. Shin loves spicy food, had just recently been eating dumplings when you dragged him to that store, remember that, years ago, and then he started eating ramen when he started hanging out with Naruto, I guess though he still adds spicy stuff. Anko frowned and then whipped something at Kurinai, and Kurinai caught it between her fingers, it was a picture, of her, and Naruto, the way they were last night, except they were so not that close, and there was no making out, they didn't even kiss. I came to deliver this to you. I only know one ninja woes here currently who would have some talent at this, I thought it was pretty funny after Tsunade caught him and beat him up. Anko jumped onto the couch and laughed to herself, you should have seen Shin's face when I showed it to him, he was so gullible too, he was like I never thought Naruto had it in him, he sounded like he admired Naruto. And you seem to enjoy being with the Shin, who seems to have gotten rid of his mask, Kurinai commented, which stopped the laughter. Well, weren't you the one who told me long time ago you noticed Naruto the most because he was a shinobu who always shows his emotion. Gurunai blinked, maybe she should be careful what she tells Anko, she never doubted Anko's intelligence, but for her to remember something she had said a long time ago. It's not like him teasing you or anything about having a thing for Naruto, I mean hey at least when you're in bed with him he'll show you how great you are, Anko winked. Ah. I don't know what's worst. You should join those two perverts. Baka. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X and Kakashi had been sneezing non-stop for the past couple of days. I couldn't believe we lost a picture. Jiraiya cried. Damn. They both shivered at the same time as they remembered Tsunade preparing to punch them, though Kakashi was more fortunate. We could always ask Shin to draw for us, Jiraiya said, he learned when Shin had traveled for a while with them he was a talented artist. Oh. I saw Anko and Shin together last night, Kakashi mentioned, deep into the forest, with implied things into it. Jiraiya's eyes glinted, did you know Shin is almost as young as Naruto? I know. A double story. We need to be more careful, and Kakashi and Jiraiya waited for the two women to forget about the picture so they could steal it back. But if it would help so much, I would skip lines. Also, I don't know what to seriously write about this story because it was an experimental, and I never had a serious plot with it, so I'm just winging it, xd. This is fanfiction, so when I say a certain character is, let's say a snake, xd Shes is snake. Okay. And if I say the Kaiubi is female, then Shes female, screw you people who would argue with me, lmao, jokes. xxxx. Experimental. What is a date? An. Answer it for me xd your opinions, lol. Naruto woke up drenched in his sweat, and as usual the same scent was lingering again, he shuddered at the scent, what was going on with him. He twisted around feeling slightly uncomfortable. With his body until he couldn't handle it any longer and just plain got up, he was hot, by the time he had walked into the bathroom and unleashed the cold water against him, he was panting hard. Which begged to question why, it wasn't natural to be tired when you just walked and that scent won't leave him alone, it's either calling him, or Hess the one making the smell, and how could he? And then there was a knock against the door. Naruto, come out of the bathroom when you relax, Shin called from the outside, Naruto didn't answer back. It was the same thing yesterday, Shin won't let him go out until, he was relax. Though the thing was when he went out the scent was no longer there, and the desire to search for it was gone. Does Shin know what's going on with him? He probably does, along with the scent, his stomach seems to be burning him, like it was hungry, he looked at the mark on his stomach and crinkled his. Nose at it, could it be? I would be. Naruto's eyes widened a bit as saying Kaiubi heightened whatever he was feeling, he wanted to say, what the fuck. But even his mouth had gone dry, well screw it. XXXXXX. Naruto came out of the shower and had the towel wrapped around his lower body, as he walked his hair was still dripping wet, but he didn't care, he wanted water all over at the moment, maybe he. Should go looked into the hallways and seen that the windows were shot, he frowned at this, he didn't hear Shin inside the house, oh hell, so he might as well be retarded and open the window even though he had a gut feeling as to why they were closed, he opened the window, and then the scent came in like a sucker punch to him. He moaned and ultimately said, ow he wrapped his arms around his stomach, well if that wasn't stupid, he moved to close the window, but couldn't quite do it because the scent, he didn't want to stop smelling it. He practically dragged himself to the room and put his clothes on, he was sensitive to the cotton fabrics he wore, actually he had this urge to just go naked. But he wasn't thinking right any longer, he walked out of the house and maintained a nice walk. 
During his walk, he passed by the Hayuga mansion and caught sight of Hinata, who said hello to him, he waved as a return and was actually feeling glad Hinata no longer stutter, maybe going through adulthood is not that bad. He whistled a bit, distracting himself from the scent that became more powerful, no, shit, was he getting closer to the carrier of that certain fragrance. Naruto. Someone called, and in come Kiba riding Akimaru. Yo, Kiba, Naruto waved back. Kiba frowned and sniffed the air around him, sigh, why the hell do you smell weird? Weird? I can't explain, but it's not your normal scent. He remembered the Inuzuka clan have some beastie smelling, they could practically smell anything, so he decided to take a shot at it. Say Kiba do you smell something different around the air? Like the certain smell that makes you hungry. Kiba sniffed the air and shook his head, it smells normal as before. Naruto nodded, so why were you like looking for me? Oh. I wanted to congratulate you for macking out with my former sensei, though Kiba sounded like a person who actually was happy for Naruto, the growl he released was another story, damn it, and I had a crush on her. Before Naruto could say he never was making out with Kurenai, Kiba left and said he was going to seek out his other long-time crush. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X The Kashi and Jureya in the normal spot above the Hokage's building, specifically they were sitting down on the roof, making another work of art. And what's that? Shin landed lightly on the roof too, in fear of what Tsunade might do if he was ever caught with two greatest ninja perverts, he was wearing his usual cover your face mask. Shin. Glad you received my letter, you old mind drawing an art for me, you and Anko, half naked and heated. Shin blushed at this and frowned, I may have excelled in beating shit out of people, but Anko would kill me. Whipped and he didn't even get any, Jiraiya shook his head clearly disappointed, who knew the great Shin would be afraid of a woman, Jiraiya nudged Kakashi, who snickered. I have every reason to be afraid of women, Shin replied dryly at them, he looked out as he sensed something. Anko holding out on you? Kakashi asked, that is a reason to fear women, Jiraiya nodded in agreement. Shut up. Rejection hurt, but you have to accept it, Kakashi mumbled to Shin. I don't know what's normal between Jiraiya, you and Naruto, Shin sighed. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X she wanted Kakashi's head because he was ninja enough to break in her apartment house and steal the picture in which Anko had brought to her as a way of breaking the news or amusing herself. But it, she couldn't believe he would have had guts to even go to where she put the picture in, she wondered would she even put it in there, she sighed and wondered as she looked at Anko, if. The Kakashi and her would make a good couple, but then shook her head. Anko and Kakashi together would equal two, perverted kids, Anko never pretended to be innocent, and she wasn't she was as frank as you see her telling you she wants you dead. Gurunai then wondered of to Asuma, he was a good-looking guy, and he was always there for her, she wasn't oblivious to the fact that he has a thing for her, but never gave him a signal to go for it, she just can't handle smoke. Everyone have their bad habits, and with that she wonders what Naruto's bad habits were. Talking out loud and not knowing to shut up, that could be countered Hess very honest. Hess stubborn and just doesn't know when to give up, like the fights he fought during his earlier years that she actually witnessed. What would you guys think if I date Shin? Anko blurted out as she ate her dumplings, the topic she threw at them could be taken either way, serious or not, depending on her friend's expression, which couldn't be told. Isn't Shin a bit too young for you? Asuma said, who lighted another stick for him to smoke. I don't know, I never asked for his age, and he never asked for mine, I figured age doesn't matter, Anko said with her snake-like grin. Her and I wondered if that was just a message made for her or was Anko being serious about the Shin thing. Lust is lust, you know, Anko said. Kurenai stifled a laughter, of course that was just like her best friend, even in the somewhat semi-seriousness of the topic she would find a way to make it into a nonsense thing. Women, Asuma sighed, you think young men like them could handle your beastie-like appetite? They don't even know. Well, you know what they say, can't teach an old dog a new trick, but if you have like a pup, they have time to learn and get used to it, Anko replied. Asuma excused himself after getting tired of Anko's jokes and his ego being beaten down continuously. I figured it won't be so bad, Anko said after a while as she crossed her arms in front of her chest, the age difference isn't so bad. I approve, Kurenai said, Hess very mature for his age, so it should be a success, and won't have to worry about the villagers looking down upon it. You mean you would date Naruto? 
that's good then, I always thought you two could hit it off great, glad you don't feel all weird about the age difference, Anko said. Ah, Kurinai started, I thought we were talking about you and Shin, Anko waved a demissive hand at her. Honestly, Kurinai, not to be mean or anything, you're like at the right age of getting married, you should find a great man, and by a great man, I mean the blonde brat who turned into a legendary hot man. And that blonde brat who turned into a hot legendary man would actually settle down. Brah. It takes a special woman to make the man walk straight to their doom, I mean, realize their happiness is being together with the women they love. Woman, Kurinai corrected. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto's stomach started to growl, and he remembered they hadn't stocked the fridge with food, nor does he have the boxes of ramen, being away from Kanoha for a long time he was slightly off, he went around town a couple of times until he saw the grocery store, and then he blinked a little bit as he noticed two people walking the street. Na, Shikamaru. He called, and he practically jumped in front of his old friend, Tamari-san. Naruto, hey Naruto. As if Shikamaru just realized he hadn't seen his friend for a long time. That's the short shrimp from before. Tamari whispered to Shikamaru. Naruto nudged Shikamaru on the side, and he flashed the foxy look, you and Tamari send dating. No, it's nothing like that. Like I would date someone like him. Tamari said out loud. Oh, so why are you here, Tamari-san? How's Gara? Busy, since has the Kazakiage now. What? XXXX. Gurunai frowned at the ear-piercing yell that seemed to pierce the sky itself, followed by a groan and a familiar voice, she knew, it was labeled along with obnoxious. She jumped from roof to roof in search for him, he cold yelled that much unless there was something wrong, even if there wasn't, well she's not going hesitate, shall check. She spotted the blonde ninja in front of the other two younger ninjas, Shikamara and Tamari, he was sort of crying. She smoothly landed close by to them, Naruto. She called. Na, the blonde ninja Naruto looked up to see Kurinai, who had the worried look face on, Kurinai-san. He launched at her, and she stepped back a little because she thought he was going to push her some sort, but Naruto merely embraced her, it's horrible. Imogenin. Everyone is either Chunin or Jonin, and Gara is Kazakiyaj. Gurunai blinked and started to laugh, which made the blonde pull away and glare at her, she raised her hands, ya or so, she didn't know what exactly to say to Naruto, simple. Naruto blinked in return for the comment Kurinai made, um, not sure what to take it as, but he looked at Kurinai and the beautiful smile of hers, thanks, he grinned. Shikamaru nudged Naruto, you and Kurinai send dating. He whispered to Naruto, so that the older Jonin doesn't hear. Hey. No, she and I are not dating, Naruto said a bit too loud, which made the two women with them pay more attention, I, I wish, Naruto added, and blushed at the admission. Ha, hey, Shikamaru smirked, say Naruto have you seen this picture? Nani? Picture? Naruto asked curiously. Yeah, Kiba was walking around with it, and he was blushing like a tomato, Shikamaru pulled out the picture from his vest, Naruto looked and did a Lee reaction. Yosh. Th that didn't happen, Naruto said, he grabbed the picture from Shikamaru's hand and then showed it to Kurinai, it didn't happen, right. Kurinai stared at the picture, she sighed in relief, it wasn't the make out under the moonlight one, instead it was Kurinai feeding Naruto veggies, while Naruto was trying to apparently feed a Raymond. No, it's obviously a painting, whoever did it was talented, even though on the picture they were just having dinner, the way the artist painted her with sultry eyes and pouty lips and Naruto flushed self it implied other things. Someone with great eyes and could clearly read body language, could think of many things in the innocent picture of eating out, like a date. And Kami-sama, even if Naruto was trained under perverted people he still didn't catch the implication of the picture at hand, though, she questions how she got it, she stared a bit too long at the picture, because Naruto was no longer talking to Shikamaru and Tamari, who also questioned the picture originality, um, she coughed, I just, it's a lovely picture, she said uneasily. She chuckled. Yeah, Kurinai-san, it makes me wish it actually happened, Naruto smiled, say Shikamaru, could I keep this picture? Naruto asked, Shikamaru nodded, do you know who painted it? I would say sigh, but say work isn't like that, I just found it flying around nearby the Hokage's tower, Shikamaru said. And you kept it? Tamari asked with raised eyebrows. Yes, I just wanted to ask Naruto if it was true, Shikamaru said easily though a total lie, Tamari crossed her arms, heh, well, shall we keep going then? I Naruto Tamari and Shikamaru said, leaving Naruto and Kurinai. Kurinai was still spacing out, to be honest the picture was something to be envied, the painted Kurinai and Naruto was so close to each other, the picture of fun and innocent, but there was passion in their eyes, they shared the closeness and didn't even look awkward, they looked perfect together. 
Gurunai Chan, Naruto whispered into her ear just to get some nice reaction. She blinked at the closeness and sucked in a breath and blushed, hm, Naruto hummed, the picture still between his fingers, he was looking at it. You like veggies? Naruto inquired, Kurunai nodded, taking a moment to get herself back, oh, I like ramen, eh. Would you like the picture Kurunai-san? Naruto asked. Huh, caught by surprise, and no, it's fine, it's a beautiful art though. Naruto gave a foxy grin and reached for her hand, as a sensei, he begun, you should teach me to eat healthy food, and as a young adult, Ima teach you eating ramen ain't so bad. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X AN I am not a cook, X, X oh sorry my food a veggie stuff, whatever, I don't know veggies that are delicious, I'm not fan, X, X, ha ha. Gurunai went to her favorite restaurant that served healthy food, Naruto tried it out, picking up his chopstick and picking some of it, he was picking up any random veggies, in fact he decided the lighter green the better it would taste, okay, it wasn't bad, it tasted different, he couldn't quite say he loved it, nor liked it, but he didn't dislike the feeling of eating it, it was just new. You should try this one, Kurunai picked a different one and fed Naruto, who easily opened his mouth and made a ah sound while doing so. Yada, this one is delicious, it's not like those bitter ones, he thought about it, it has flavors even though it is slightly bitter. The things you cannot forget in life are the one that are so colorful and yet bittersweet, Kurunai said. Naruto barely ate anything while Kurunai ate most of it, Naruto was puzzled, Kurunai had an appetite, yet seemed to manage to get in shape, he didn't realize he was looking straight at her body while he thought about it. He quickly looked away at the same time his stomach growled, Yar still hungry. Kurunai chuckled, Raymond, then. Then no im fi. They serve ramen here, though probably not as great as a chikoris. And with that Naruto ordered ramen, his stomach growled more when his order came, the aroma went to his nose, and it smelled delicious enough that his mouth was watering, he picked up the chopsticks and gently ate. And I thought you were hungry, Kurunai said quietly. Naruto blushed and seemed to squirm a bit, no, I am hungry, I, I just don't want to, wolf it down, since I'm with a lady and all, I gotta act like a gentleman, right? Gurunai smiled, don't put yourself under pain just for me, K Naruto. Hi. And he was about to start wolfing, but he looped it around and led it to Kurunai, say ah. Just to humor him Kurunai did just that, ah, and that was the first time Kurunai let herself be fed by a guy, it was not at all awkward, it was comfortable with Naruto, if she denies she wasn't attracted to him, yup, it was okay. Kurunai hummed at the rich flavor, Naruto was just mesmerized the sight of Kurunai humming with her eyes closed, boy it was getting hot, he manifested a handkerchief and wiped away the sweat. When Kurunai opened her eyes Naruto just had to stare, what kind of straight man won't stare at a beautiful woman right in front of you? Her rosy lips were slightly open and her eyes were so red, and the makeup she wore just makes her eyes stand out more, though it was just simply done not that he knows that much about makeup. It was safe to bet your life that Naruto's favorite color was red. The Chiricus one is far delicious, it'll take you there sometime. They sat in the restaurant for a while, just idling chatting the time away. And usual when it was time to go home, Naruto insisted to walk Kurunai home, as usual Kurunai battled against it, saying she could take care of herself, but eventually just like the last time Naruto walked her home, though the second time around there was no holding hand, because Naruto felt his hand sweat, and so he stuck them into his pockets like what had seen Shikamaru do, though they walked silently side by side, Naruto started to hum a tune that soothed Kurunai, they seemed to get closer to each other, that they made contact a couple of times. Naruto slowly started singing softly, Kurunai managed to caught some of it. Weary. Tell me will you hold me, she never expected Naruto to have a beautiful voice, it was a complete contrast against his loud voice, it was soft and gentle. They told me, a man should be faithful. And walk when not able, and fight till the end, she enjoyed just hearing parts of it, she enjoyed the walk. She felt safe. She felt wonderful. She was enjoying it. She was happy he was with her. Except it had to end when they stopped in front of her apartment. Good night Kurunai-san, Naruto said. Kurunai went close to Naruto and copied what had done earlier, good night Naruto-kun she whispered into his ear. Shock, surprised, a tomato blonde, oh, it was worth it. She stuck her tongue out, like a child as she opened the door and went in, and when she closed it, Naruto had a big smile on his face as he pulled out the picture. He would surely thank the artist, what better way to ask for a date from a beautiful woman without truly asking, and what better way to remember his first sort of real date. XXXXXX. Shin was laying down still on the roof with the two pervs, he was actually chained up, he would have left way earlier if he hadn't been so, chained up. So what happened? Jiraiya asked, he pulled out his pen and went to a blank page of his book and begun writing something. 
he scored without asking, Kakashi said as he opened his book to start reading again, I never really saw Kurinai like that, Kakashi said, his tone the usual dry one. What do you mean? Her eyes, they glow sort of, or it's probably women's stuff they get all emotional, Kakashi shrugged. Shin sighed, I wonder if you two will ever get married. X X X X X X X X X X X X A N. Nope, I didn't forget about the scent in Kaiubi, M winging it you know, and M following the two famous ninjas of Konoha. Tadadada. So in their book, happy time comedy flirt first and then drama and then more comedy, X3 we have no plot, we're making up one as we go. So as the title goes, experimental. Bakashi and Jiraiya comes in with a frown on their face. Bakashi. Not exactly the way we wanted the date to end. The sweat drops, well, it's not a date, they were just hanging out. Jiraiya. The least you could have done was be more descriptive about Kurane's look, though sultry was good, you should have kept it going. The uh huh, it'll do that next time. Bakashi. And make them make out. The this is rated teens. Bakashi and Jiraiya. Nope, it's M4 mature. The checks, ooh oh, ooh, ooh, damn it, but that's so hard to write. Jiraiya throws his books at me, Jiraiya. Read it and educate yourself. The A, you kidnapped my character. Wah, I wanted Anko and him time too, lol. Jiraiya. Make the snake woman wait, we have important things to fry at the moment. Naruto woke up drenched in his sweat yet again, but for a different reason, he was flushed, and if he could look at himself, he won't look at himself. He was happy no one could get into his mind and know exactly why he was very flushed. His subconscious came out with something better than itcha itcha, and, well the rest was history. He tried replaying it his mind, and they were soon becoming lost as he cold think straight, he pulled out his journal and decided to write it down for future, um, reference. He wrote, in the flaming red of her eyes, she surrounds herself with the cooling water, as the water falls on her and caressed her body, I cold not help but stare, she arched her back and her mouth opened, and so did mine in awe. Naruto paused and cursed, what happened next? That's all he could remember but he knew something more happened. I mean, blood trickled from his nose. He got up and stared at the entry he just wrote, no one would even come here, so it was safe to say no one would know, the picture he got from yesterday was there too, he kind of used it as a bookmark, and last night he stared at it for the longest time, wondering. Maybe that was one of the trigger his mind created that sort of dream. He shook his head and headed for the bathroom, and again he was hit by the silence of the room, and his stomach grumbled. Hey, usually Shin would be up and cooking, Naruto said to himself, oh well, maybe he got drunk and got laid. And when Naruto came into the bathroom, someone sneaked in. Now, what would be good use? X X X X X X X X X X Bakashi came to their usual place and was smiling broadly, if ever anyone sees his face they would be all freaked by the huge smile, he was happy for the mask. He looked at the chained up Shin who seemed half dead, he pointed at Shin, I think we should free the kid, he told Jiraiya. That's fine, Jiraiya said, what you got for me? Naruto may not be the most descriptive person, but it's safe to say his simplicity in description makes people create more possible outcome of the certain image. You read his journal. Shin asked, do you guys not value someone's space? We're ninjas, not saints, Kakashi replied, Kakashi poked Shin with a kunai, and Shin growled slightly at the contact, are you alright? You poke me with a fucking kunai, shithead. Shin replied a bit not too nice, it was obvious he was not alright. Jiraiya and Kakashi exchanged looks, anyways, what did he write down? Jiraiya asked. Um, in the flaming red of her eyes, she surrounds herself with the cooling water, as the water falls on her, Kakashi paused at this and caressed her body I couldn't help but stare, she arched her back and her mouth opened, and so did mine in awe. The brat got some future writing skills ahead of him. Jiraiya announced proudly, still he needs to be more descriptive, like oh I don't know if she was naked. As still young, Shin butted in, beside it's like how women dress, you won't want a woman to show so much skin, because it doesn't leave anything to be imagined, we, men are creative enough to each their own imagination. You speak of masturbation? Jiraiya asked. Shin sighed, figures they would end up with that thought, a couple of pervs. He was getting a headache. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Anko and Kurinai walked in Tsunade's office, and it was not a happy sign, Tsunade appears to be restless as she tapped against her desk with her nails, and she hasn't stopped since they came in, which was a long time ago. And then suddenly she hit the desk with the palm of her hand and pointed at the two, you cannot let this go on. It would be dangerous when someone who carries demons in them hit puberty along with the demons mating. And what do you want us to do? Anko asked, who received an icy glare from Tsunade and Kurinai, she just grinned. 
to make sure nothing triggers it. Hanko snickered, a young man just realizing how hot a woman is cannot be tied down, one way or another it's unavoidable. That's why I asked everyone to avoid a certain young man, I don't know what would truly happen since, have you seen Shin? Tsunade turned to ask Shizun. No, Tsunade sama, I haven't seen him for the last couple of days now. Seriously? He usually visits you and I around this time. I miss him, Shizun admitted. Gurren I glanced at Anko, who remained calm, she thought there would be some sort of reaction from Anko, but she guessed wrong, so Anko wasn't truly into Shin, it's not that her friend ever was upfront with those kind of feelings. Stupid perverts. Someone yelled, I will not let you use my body as a model for your perverted books. And in come Shin bursting into the open window of the Hokage's office. Ah, was the comment he said when he looked around and saw four females staring at him with wide eyes, ah. Shin, Shizun said. Why the hell are you naked? Tsunade yelled and was readily about to punch Shin. Hey, Shin looked down and said, well not that naked, I still have my boxers on, he defended, which was a weak one. And what is this I hear about you being used as a model for perverted books? Tsunade asked, you know I don't tolerate those kind of antics. I, I, Shin's stomach growled, so hungry. Shizun giggled, though gotta admit you do have a nice body, Shin, oh. And if you would like we could get something to eat, though I say put your clothes on before anyone decides to attack you. Shin caught eyes with Anko, and for a moment he thought he saw something in there, but then again he was hungry, those two pervs didn't know how to treat their captives properly, at least give him some food and water. If anything Anko had looked at me like she wanted to kill him, he plastered the best smile he could, which looked like say smile, the socially awkward one. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X some people sent me messages for the boats up, a girl Kaiubi one, he, sorry for the peeps that wanted it a dude, oh, oh or maybe we could have a Kaiubi that's a dude somehow xd. Naruto blacked out the moment the water made contact with his skin, and he woke up and holy shit, wasn't she just plain gorgeous, she was wearing her white kimono, with floral designs that looked like fire, loose, she sat there on the big couch chair that seemed to be the color of gold, her eyes were closed, and she didn't made any move since had been here, and he wasn't sure how long it been. It was weird because she was behind bars. Why are you locked up? That's not to say you are not locked up. She spoke, it was different from Kurinase's voice, Naruto noted, Kurinase one was sweet and calming, well this particular woman was full of, lust. It made him sweat more, or feel like that. Because, Naruto looked around, it's just you and I, we're either free or captured. If you release the sign, you could free us both, she whispered softly and Naruto couldn't help but wonder why his body was responding to her, he grunted, or we could stay trapped forever. Would you stop that, he snapped at her, she opened her eyes slowly and Naruto heart just beated faster, again, holy shit, you're, you're. Naruto-kun, she put a playful tone into his name as she glided towards him and stopped just right at where the bars were separating them, you always needed me before, she pouted, I saved your life. Naruto frowned, yeah, well cause of you I have a fuck shit life, I had no friends and no family, my village hated me. I had to work hard at everything. You took so many people. He hissed. She winced at the tone of his voice and for a moment Naruto thought had been harsh, but didn't show it, I'm a demon, that's what you people don't understand. You think I like killing people. Naruto raised an eyebrow and folded his arms across his chest not believing her at all. Okay, fine, your kind are such weaklings, it can't be helped, the weak die, the strong live, there used to be a lot of us, until you stupid people came around hunting us down, I had enough of it. She sighed, and Naruto couldn't help, but realized the scary Kaiubi had no all along, was, not male. Whoa, whoa, he seems to have a hard time going around it. How come your voice is scary when you're in your original form? Naruto asked, the Kaiubi rolled her eyes at him. Hello, it's part of the image, I don't think any of you would find me scary if I'm in this form, which is my original form, you be like hey Shes female. Shes weak let's go get em, but nu oh, if I was mean and bad, you fear me. She did have a point and she appeared more human as she kept talking. Ima go now, Naruto said suddenly. Buy it. She pleaded, her voice going higher than usual, and made Naruto cringed a bit, maybe her high notes were more irritating to the normal ears, you can't leave me here. Why not? I get lonely too, she said, Naruto saw the same expression he had when he was alone, shit, he had never thought, the Kaiubi, would know how it felt. She reached her hand out to him, through the cold metal bars that seemed so large, Naruto cold help but laugh, can't you just go through the bars? She sighed, if I could, I would, she withdrew her hand knowing too well, the blonde ninja was as oblivious as the time she remembered seeing him. 
Gal've grown up, she smiled, no wonder, she watches over you, but in with you, her face brightened more and Naruto couldn't help but look at the slight skin that the loose kimono revealed of her, there were some sort of tattoo entwining. Naruto had no idea what she was going on about, but her smile was intoxicating, it was so alluring, and he couldn't help but enjoy it, but still not like it, if it made sense, it was because it looked so practice, it looked like she was doing it on purpose, she had a hidden agenda. She wants him. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Ow. Naruto wrapped his arms around his stomach and gasped for air, he was submerged all this time with that Kyubi. He knew she was waiting for something, every time he'll be close to dying, the closer she'll get to be free. He stood up and turned the water off, his hair was longer now, and it slightly bothered him that his eyes were sort of being covered by his hair, he pulled his wet hair back and went out of the shower, he grabbed his towel and dried himself off, he had to know, ask Gramit Sunaid, why he had suddenly collapsed when he didn't feel weak or anything, he wondered, he looked at the seal on his stomach. If Kaiubi had anything to do with him sweating a lot, he decided not to go seeing her anytime soon than needed, even if she was lonely, she still had committed crimes, she was a demon. He twisted the door knob and opened it and saw red eyes staring at him straight that he kind of stepped back very fast and fell backward, his head making contact with cemented floor or some hard stuff. He robbed the spot where his head felt pain the most and closed his eyes until the pain subsided. Naruto, I'm sorry for scaring you, Kurinai went to him and helped him up. Ah, no, it's okay, Naruto chuckled, I'm just a bit jumpy, Kurinai raised an eyebrow, but Naruto ignored it, in fact he wanted to ignore her eyes for a while, sure, the Kyuba's eyes were slightly different, but they were still red and black like hers, it sent him back to a place where he was bombarded by those evil eyes, the Kyuba's, he hated red. But loved Kurinai's reds. So what are you doing here, Kurinai-san? Naruto asked as he made it look like he glanced at her. Kurinai pretended that Naruto wasn't acting weird, maybe because of the date, er, not date they had and they had seemed to have gotten closer, did he freak out with their playful banter in the ending. It wasn't that much. Um, she called really think, she was disobeying Tsunade's orders, Naruto shouldn't be around women that he might be attracted to, Tsunade specifically told Kurinai not to meet him, but she figured, telling him some other lies, like she would be going into a mission, which it technically was, and won't be seeing each other much, or at all, for a time being. Though it wasn't the best of times since he just got out of the shower and was half naked, or actually naked with a towel wrapped around his lower part. How could they be so sure Naruto would be the one acting like a hormonal teenager? She was fighting the urge to pull Naruto close to her and just claim him. That's mine, the thought surged into her, it was out of character for her. It'll wait until Yara dress up, she turned on her heels and went to the hallway getting far as she could from the male body that made her feel heated. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Shin had a knowing feeling, it was easy to tell what just happened, damn, the demon bitch. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto wore regular clothes, a black shirt and blue loose pants, it started again, that feeling, this time it came with a voice, it was Kaiubi calling. Naruto-kun, you didn't tell me, Shes with you. The Kaiubi sounded jealous when Naruto caught sight of Kurinai sitting on the couch, looking outside the window, her profile was spectacular, especially when Shes relaxed. Naruto was glad not to have come into the room with a loud bang he used to do when he was younger, he was taught with patience and silliness, you would see the most beautiful things, was this what had been missing out. Ino and Sakura's beauty were always amplified to his eyes because they meant to show it off, his childhood crush Sakura was beautiful, but Kurinai held a different beauty, one that Hess learning more and more. Gurunai felt someone watching her and turned to see Naruto there, all dressed, and he held a smile quite different from his other smile, it was a smile that hints some secrets only he would know. They are beautiful, Naruto said, Kurinai never imagined Naruto to be so handsome and charming, the way he complimented her and she never expected it, it made her slightly blush. Naruto, she started and made a move to stand up when Naruto approached her, I just wanted to let you know it'll be going on a mission and would be out of town for a while. Naruto closed his eyes and opened them and just nodded, ninjas have to work every day of their lives and protect people, putting themselves on the risk. Thank you for letting me know, Kurinai-san, Naruto gave a friendly smile, be careful, na. He reached out and touched her hair gently since they were so close, he would miss her. Kurinai reached for him and held the wrist of the hand that was touching her hair with such care, it wasn't a kiss, but it was intimate nonetheless, she sighed, she would miss him. 
Of course, she replied after the moment of silence just staring into each other's eyes, it was his blue eyes that kept her from going anywhere, she wanted to be near him. I, I, Kurin I cold and said, said bye even if it was for a while, she remembered the young boy Wad left and she never had a chance to say goodbye. Back then she didn't really have to say goodbye, they were never close, they were strangers to each other, Kurinai had liked Naruto instantly when she noticed the influence he had on Hinata, and when Naruto had stubbornly told her not to leave the town and go back as being a teacher, never leaving her team, they were in close, but Kurinai owed him a lot. Naruto gently pulled her to him and kissed her on the lips, Kurinai felt the smile against her own lips. When they pulled apart to look at each other. There was no more questioning how they see one another. Not a student. Not a teacher. But someone. They loved spending time together, and their first kiss was something they won't forget. Even if it was a mere peck. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Shin had seen the exchange between the two and pulled back, okay, so it wasn't the demon bitch, it was Kurinai-san. Shin felt a brotherly protectiveness to Naruto, had grown close to him, and wondered if Naruto would be spiraling into a heartbreak, had already seen Naruto's get hurt from Sakura. But he shook his head, Kurinai-san won't be stupid, she knows a great man when she sees one, right? Surely. Now if he could plan more, he had heard of the plan Tsunade had, prevention of any woman that might trigger the change in Naruto, so far Kurinai wasn't triggering anything that would be called odd. Unless making Naruto slowly fall in love was odd. But Tsunade made it loud and clear Kurinai couldn't be around. He leaned against the wall, thinking of ways. And why? He wished he was a genius like Shikamaru, then again a genius like Shikamaru won't even know how women think, because sometimes the things they do and say are irrelevant to what's at hand. And they always have different triggers every day it seems. For example, Anko. You be kind to her and compliment her, she would glare at you and even make threats of cutting you to pieces. He shivered at the thought. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto had been with Kurinai for the most part before she left like after a week, and then, another week passed by without her presence. It's been a week since Naruto last seen Kurinai, it was driving him insane, he went to Abachan to ask when she would return, she was less than forthcoming with information, saying Kurinai won't be around for a while. She said she would be out of town for a while, was this how it felt for the people that cared for him? To be worried. No wonder Tsunade Abachan made sure we report to her every week, it felt like someone was gutting your inside. How long was a while? He wished he hadn't kissed Kurinai, because now he kept dreaming about her more and the kiss. He would constantly think about her, maybe it was because, because, arg. His train of thoughts about her always halted, because the Kaiubi would stop it. I don't know why you keep thinking about her. She's special. I'm special too, I've been with you longer than she had, she just started noticing you now, Naruto winced at that, she might be one of those people that probably didn't like you before. Shut up, you don't know her. Neither do you. I know her. She's sweet and lovely, she's the most beautiful woman I ever seen. Hey, do you know why her eyes are red? Do you know where she came from? His dreams would start out nicely and then turn a whole other direction. He had wandered off to kept his mind up by busying himself, he would would help Sakura with some stuff and Ino with her flowers and sometimes Hinata with practices. He remembered what Jureya had said when he caught sight of Naruto with three girls no less than a week. Gurunai san not good enough for a young man's appetite. He had blushed at the comment and refused to be taunted, he instead ignored it and walked away leaving the white-haired ninja hanging. He had drifted of the Ichikara Raymond and found himself talking to A.M. more than usual. Shin noted his action too, asking Naruto why all of a sudden he was surrounding himself with the female population of Konoha, or Konoha's female population were surrounding themselves with Naruto's presence. Now that Naruto noticed it, he didn't know, at first he was confused and then yelled at himself mentally, it was like cheating. Even if he and Kurinai-chan weren't together. They didn't even have an official date. But they kissed. A peck. But it was a kiss. Kurinai-chan. Shin. Naruto saw Shin in front of the dumpling store having a longing look, Shin turned and smiled. Hey Naruto. We have a mission. Ha, hey, we. You and I. Yes, we need to get packing because we leave immediately. So hurry. Wait, just the two of us. No, Sakura-chan is coming along. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X
Shin, Naruto and Sakura were all heading out to a village called Eternal. Naruto had wondered why it was called Eternal. When Naruto had explained to Shin, the reason they were going there was to see an heir of one clan. He went rigid, they were supposed to stay there for a while to protect the village for the upcoming nuptials. Tsunade reassured that they won't be doing much except just guarding and just to be on the same side, ask Sakura to tag along so they have their medical needs. Naruto was the one leading them, and Shin moved the same speed as Sakura, he could hear Shin and her exchanging some stuff about what they know about the village and the clans residing there. They don't like snakes, was the one thing Shin said that truly caught Naruto. They came into the village within two days, it was clean and full of cherry blossom that sent Naruto into thinking about Kurenai, he sort of went to a corner and moped around. What's wrong with him? Sakura nudged Shin, Shin chuckled lightly and replied just some guy stuff. That didn't work at all, Sakura won't lay off of him, he would have thought she would drop the subject, since when girls say girl stuff he won't pursue further, it was always dangerous. Does Naruto look different to you? Sakura asked, Shin looked at Naruto and tilted his head slightly, that was really odd, Naruto does look a bit different. Sakura-san, have you finally realized your feelings for Naruto? Shin asked, as they walked into the village, changing the subject. Sakura blushed slightly and replied after moments of thought, I, I already see him in a new light, Hess always with me, protecting me, sometimes Hess the only one that could make me smile when things get worse. Shin looked at Naruto who was still kind of moping around while he walked, his posture was dreadful, far worse than Shikamaru's lazy one. He wondered what Naruto would do if he found out that Sakura likes him, he found himself smirking a bit, it was true, the Naruto Uzumaki people hated seems to be the one everyone was wanting. But you still have feelings for Sasuke, Shin added, Sakura remained silent, her eyes saddening at the thought, Shin hadn't like any female close to his age for many reasons. 1. They tend to be irritating. 2. They're sometimes obsessed with their image and would be sent into depression if their image of themselves were not perfect. 3. They would try hard to get the guy they want that was purely eye candy and not notice the one that truly cares for them. 4. He always had a thing for older women. 5. Sakura was flat, and even if she shows some skin there wasn't anything pleasing enough to look, unlike Anko, she wore barely any clothings, but damn wasn't she hot. Shin had the look oh, oh. Of like what the hell was he going on about, he reddened like a tomato and coughed loudly at the awkwardness he was having in his mind. And he thought himself immune with the perverted thoughts, he cursed. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Gurunai was wearing a crimson red kimono and was seated properly in front of the head of the clan, she remained quiet and stared at the hot tea served before her, she hadn't touched any of the food they had put on the table either. She was glad that Anko had come with her, for some support she could always lean, Anko was busy eating away the food, even though she complained in hush whispered tone, it was spicy. As I was saying Kurunai san it's kind of you to come here in such short notice, I hate to put you in an awkward position, the head of the clan started. Gurunai nodded and remained silent, though inside she wanted to scream and just go away, it is no problem at all, Roku-san. Yada. What do you mean they don't serve Raymond? Someone yelled from the outside that made everyone inside stop what they were doing. Calm down, I'm sure they have some. Baka. Shut up. And then someone yelled in pain, and some loud noises of the ground crackling and wall crumbling could be heard. Roku had a disgusted expression on, people of such lower class don't know how to behave themselves, this is why they're better off dead. Gurunai didn't like what he said at all, even if they were lower they were still human beings. It reminded her of Naruto, Roku was not Naruto, Naruto wouldn't stand people being treated poorly, he would always see good in people even if they were criminals. He would never give up in his dreams, he cares about his village and the people living in it, even when they hadn't cared for him. There were some people talking and greeting someone and then, Shin slid the door open with a smile on his face. Shin. Anko and Kurunai said at the same time. Kurunai-san. Anko-cha he coughed, Anko-san, he bowed, I'm sorry for disturbing, I'm in need to know why, you ask us, he faced Roku with a hard stare. Shin, an older woman that was stunningly beautiful with her light blonde hair that was tied elegantly up and her bangs cascading down, smoothly framing her face. Hey, mom, long time no see, Shin smiled and hugged his mother. What are you doing here? Roku barked. I'm here to protect the upcoming nuptials, Woe's getting married. I am, Roku answered, to her, he pointed at Kurunai, Shin lips compressed, making it appear like thin lines, Kurunai Yuhi. XXXX. Naruto was happy that they had some sort of Raymond in the Eternal Village and was eating together with Sakura, who giggled at Naruto's childish behavior as he ate into his tenth bowl. Ah, this is almost as good as a Chikorus Raymond. Naruto said out loud. Say, Naruto-kun, Sakura said, you wanna hang with me for now, since Shin is talking to the head clan about the security. Naruto-kun. 
Naruto stopped eating for a while and thought about it and nodded, yeah, might as well, he needs to keep himself busy so he won't be missing Kurinai too much, he already looked pathetic in front of Kakashi and Shin, since they noticed, he doesn't want Kurinai learning that he was sort of out of it when she wasn't around with him. Sakura patted Naruto's shoulder and said, great. I need a new wardrobe, it seen some nice kimono. Shin had launched at Roku, growled at him, lifting him up, you lying bastard, his eyes narrowing, his mother holding him back, and Kurinai and Anko were just shocked to see Shin's behavior. Roku laughed, brother of mine, let go of me, you're in my territory, he pulled Shin's hands away from him, remember your place, brother, you're nothing but a bastard. Shin was resisting the urge to hit him especially in front of his mother, which he hadn't seen in a long time. Shin, his mother pleaded, Shin relaxed a bit and turned with a smile on his face, sorry about that mom. Would you come with me? His mother asked him, Shin nodded, his mother turned to Anko and Kurinai, if you would love to join us, you may. They went into the other side, the land that was mainly for the clan, which Kurinai was surprised to learn that Shin was related to them. Anko whispered to Kurinai, you think Shin's a bastard? Kurinai whispered back, I think, from the way his brother treated him, he is, Roku and Shin look nothing alike. Anko said a silent thank god, Shin had the good looking genes, Roku was, sure, good looking in the sick kind of way, he had the power hungry. The mom, which was Mitsuki Mizu, was kind enough to let them sit once again. Anko grinned when she caught sight of dumplings, at least someone has good taste, though Shin stiffened at the sight. Don't deprive yourself of what you want, Shin, Mitsuki told him, Shin nodded, but made no move to get dumplings. Kurinai avoided Shin's gaze because he would ask questions, Kurinai was aware of the friendship between Naruto and Shin, so she knew he would know that Naruto and her had been getting closer. Since when were you with him? Shin suddenly asked Kurinai. Kurinai lowered her eyes and said, recently. You didn't tell him. No. Am I missing something, Shin? Shin shook his head and smiled warmly at his mother. S here, Shin added after a moment when he made a move to go, it'll be going now, check on them. Them? Hi, Naruto and Sakura, I left them alone, together, Shin added with implied things to it, Kurinai would understand why Shin would attack her. But it still hurt to know, it wasn't like herself to be jealous, but she couldn't help it, everyone in Konoha had known why Naruto had worked so hard, it was for Sakura. It was for Sakura that he won't give up getting Sasuke back, he was always protecting her, and they've gotten closer. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Shin sighed as he jumped from roof to roof, looking for a blonde in pink, he couldn't put anything together, any of the pieces, was this about what Tsunade had been saying? What does it have to do with his clan and Kurinais? It would make more sense if he knows about Kurinais clan, but the woman was unknown, she practically appeared in Kanoha with no family. Just like he did, except his family, was here, her family for all he knows, are dead, of course that's what he had learned going through files. He remembered his mistake when he assumed the two bloodlines they talked about, except Kurinai had said it wasn't about her, no, she said it wasn't about Naruto and her. Oh, shit. And then what? He stopped on one roof and whacked his head with his hand to get some flow going. After, it has something to do with the Kaiubi. And he asked about Kurinai's eyes. La, how odd, he knew about Tsunade's order to Kurinai, mainly her, not to even get close to Naruto, to trigger something, then why would she order Naruto to come here? Going back to her eyes, he was trying to put all the pieces together, but he was lacking some pieces. Kurinai said she was born with them, Shin had seen many different types of eyes, and most of them that are different from the normal color were like Keke Genkai. He had seen Kaiuba's eyes before, when Naruto had called forth and went so far, he won't recognize Wo's a friend or not, they weren't similar to Kurinai's. She was a Jinjustu mistress and it was her eyes, they were made to draw on, to lure, she even made it so people would look with the makeup she wore. Even so, why would Roku want to marry her? He knows his brother well, and Roku was mad when it comes to power, he would only have children that would be powerful, had make an army out of them. It was the same obsession Roku's father had, compared to Roku, Shin was, weak, a bastard. Hey, Shin. Naruto called jumping onto the roof Shin was on, you okay? He waved a hand in front of Shin's face. Naruto, how was your day? Shin asked. Hey, I dropped of Sakura at the inn, she was pretty tired after the shopping, so did you talk to the head clan? Hi, I think we should go back H. Naruto's smile had gone bigger, and his eyes widened, and then he shouted with so much excitement, Shin. Did you know Kurinai-chan was here? Um, as a matter of fact Naruto. Naruto jumped away not even waiting for Shin to finish. Roku would be very angry to learn that someone would be hanging around his future wife in his own village so to say. He hoped Kurinai would confess about it, he didn't know why she withheld such information and let on the boy. 
but then he could not truly be mad, Kur and I had said recently, recent could be as good as yesterday or today. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Chan. Naruto called. Gurunai looked up to see the young blue eyes blonde hair Naruto, he landed in front of her with a grin and said with such a rush, I'm so happy to see you, I thought I wouldn't see you soon, so I accepted the mission, but you're here. Naruto couldn't help it, he wanted to act cool and be like, ah, what a coincidence, but no, he blew it up the moment he saw her, she was absolutely stunning with red kimono on, she was an eye candy for anyone in fact. Naruto, she said in surprised and looked behind him, where's Sakura? Nah, she said the inn, she got tired of shopping too much and stuff, I thought you were on a mission. I am, Kurunai said, I'm undercover, she smiled gently, they walked silently side by side for a while, they drifted up to a nice part of the village, it was sort of like the forest in Kanoha, except it wasn't deadly looking. There were cherry blossom everywhere, and the wind had picked up, making the flowers move and sometimes fall. At one time there was a strong gust of wind, and then the flowers started falling, like rain, Naruto stared at Kurunai throughout it, she had stretched her right hand to catch a flower, and she held onto it. Naruto caught one too, and went towards Kurunai, I think they're falling for you, just like how I am, Naruto wanted to say. Kurunai looked up and touched Naruto's whiskered cheek, are you sure it's not you they're falling for? Naruto kissed the flower he held in his hand at the same time Kurunai pressed hers against her own lips. If I was your flower. If she was my flower. Naruto looked down and rested her forehead against hers. Thanks for watching.